Good morning, brothers and sisters. Pray you are having a blessed morning this morning. Our devotional thought comes from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, 1 Kings chapter 19. And I want us to look at verse 10 initially. It says that he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy, thy altars, and have slain thy prophets with a sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life. To take it away. Let's bow our heads. Our Father God, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see a new day. Now, God, as we open your word, I pray that you give us wisdom and knowledge and um, direction as we begin our new day. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, um, if you've been following us, we've gone over this 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 verse a few times, but I, I want us to look at a different lens with this. And and when you look at this chapter, I'll just sum it up because we went through it already. You know, uh, Elijah. Elijah is fearing for his life. He had a great, he had a great milestone at the top of Mount Carmel where fire came down from heaven. God literally showed that I am with you. I am with you. And and he goes and and but the and the God has fire rain down. And he slays all the prophets of Baal. And but then Jezebel says, "You got twenty four hours, and I'm taking your life." And he runs, runs all the way from the top of the northern kingdom to the bottom. And he's hiding and afraid. And the angel comes to him and says, why are you here? And multiple times, you will hear him say this. He would say, Lord, I'm the only one. Lord, I'm the only one left. And I'm fearing for my life. They seek to take it away. I'm the only one that serves you. So God tells him to go back to where you came from. He has him go to the top of a, a mountain and God speaks to him there. And God tells him some mighty things there. He he says, listen, what what I need you to do, I need you to go and and find and, and find two kings. I need you, I, I need you to 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 find to find two kings, one for the northern kingdom and one for the southern kingdom, and anoint them and anoint them. But then, folks, when we look down. Um, when, when we when we look down at verse sixteen of First Kings chapter nineteen, it says, "And Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of uh, Abimelehola shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room." And jump down to verse nineteen. So he departed then, so he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelfth, Elijah passed him by and cast his mantle on him. And then he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back to him and took a yoke of oxen and slew, it, slew, slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they, eat, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him unto him so here you see god telling elisha okay i want you to to find the two kings and then i want you to find the next prophet after you the next prophet after you and folks i want to you know talk about today this morning you know we have to think about who's next who's next and and in this passage let's let's think about the mentality of elijah elijah is afraid elijah thinks he's the only one elijah says i'm the only one serving god they've turned their backs against you and i'm the only one left and yet his response is not to minister his response is to is to run so let's think about this logically folks if it was true that he was the only one serving the Lord and he's afraid for his life instead of ministering to somebody else so that so, so that he can have assurance that once he's gone, somebody else is carrying the banner. Somebody else is somebody else is leading the, 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 the country in the fear of the Lord. He runs and he isolates himself. And folks, these two things do not go together. If Elijah was the only one, and folks, many times we can, many times we feel like I'm the only one that's in my family, Lord. I'm the only one out of my friends. And, and folks, that could be a depressing time. That could be a lonely time, but that should not be a time of retreat. That should be a time of ministry because if I'm the only one left, then I need to be asking myself, who's next? I need to pour into someone. I need to teach someone. I need to educate someone. I need to minister to someone. I need to disciple someone so that when I am gone, 
there can be somebody that is carrying the banner. That's why when you look at Moses and, and God told him, well, listen, find Caleb, find Joshua, because you are not here forever. And once you're gone, there has to be somebody that's next. My brothers and sisters, all of us as Christians are called not all to be ministers, not all to be prophets, not all to be teachers, but all of us are called to pour into somebody. Folks, if we are not ministering, if we are not, uh, if we are not sharing the gospel, if we are not mentoring somebody in the fear of the Lord, then what are we doing? Because if we're not just like Elijah, just like Elijah, he thinks he's the only one and he runs. So, so by his actions, if he was the only one, the fear and the worship of God would have gone extinct. What a shameful thing to do, folks. And that's why God said, first, number one, you're not the only one. I got 7,000 that haven't bowed to me. But yet, but yet, if you are that worried... What you should be doing is not retreating. You should be going and setting up and pouring into individuals so that when you go, you got nothing to worry about. So go and anoint the king of the north. Go and anoint the king of the south. And go and mentor a prophet to come after you. Brothers and sisters, who are we pouring into? After you are gone, who's next? All of us don't have the same education level. All of us don't have the same knowledge. But all of us have some knowledge. And what little knowledge we have, we need to be sharing. Not to be more because God, because only God knows when our day is done. So at least we need to be secure in Lord, all that you have shown me, all you have told me, all you have given me, I have given to somebody else. So I'm not worried about who's next because I have poured into individuals. Folks, that is our duty. That's what we are called to do. We're not called to be bystanders. We're not called to just be learners all the time, but we are called to be teachers. We are called to be disciples. We are called to minister and to pour into others. Who are you pouring into? And ask yourself, with all that God's given you, with all that God showed you, with all that God has 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 has, has moved in your life, if he would, if he was to close your eyes today, who's next? Have you shared with somebody? Have you poured into somebody? Have you testified to somebody else? So that you know, Lord, I have told this young person, I have shared with this person that 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 that, that looks up to me. I have I have given them all that you've given me. Elijah thought he was the only one, and he ran. But God said, no, 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 no. Go and find others. Find the king. Anoint them. Find a prophet to come after you and educate them. Mold them so that when you are gone, you have nothing to worry about. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming soon. And we have to work with a fervency and an urgency that I have to, uh, at least folks, there should be somebody in your life that you are pouring into, that we are pouring into, that we are mentoring. So that we know that, Lord, when you close my eyes, there's somebody that I have ministered to intimately that I know can carry the banner. Our Father in heaven, I pray that we will get serious about your work. I pray that we get serious about sharing the word of God with you, with others. And Father God, I pray that you will, if we don't have somebody, Lord, if there's nobody in our life that we are intimately ministering to, intimately pouring into, Lord, that you will bring that person to us so that, now, Lord, we know. You said that, when, that, 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 that if we keep our mouth shut, the rocks will cry out, but God... You still want us to pour into somebody. You still want us to minister to somebody. You still want someone to carry the banner after we're gone. So, Father God, we pray that you would give us wisdom and knowledge to show us who you have next so that we can pour into them and that our testimony, what you have given us, 
they can take and carry it along with what you give them once we are long gone. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.